on today's episode of what is going on in Shayna's comment section. This person, I've, I pointed them out as somebody that I think is a troll, but they bring up something that I think needs to be discussed. So first commenter says, it's the enough of us for me. What is this talking about? A little bit of context. This is a comment in a video where I am talking about somebody on TikTok, a man on TikTok who is it's not even just strongly encouraging so much as telling women that they will have to settle. They have to settle if they want a man because this person who made the video said that there's not enough of us saying that he is a good man to go around. So, which right? Suspicious because I have not met a good man that has said there's not enough of us so you need to settle right so that's the context now let's get into this comment but before we do hi my name is Shayna. if you are unfamiliar with me i talk a lot about decentering men child free living and i'm a journalist yes you can read all of my articles on my website um actually i need to update that do that later um that's to me i will do that later uh yes so i would love it if you could subscribe join the conversation join the party comment away tippity tap your thoughts and now let's dive in Ooh, also if any i say anything that like vibes extra hard i would love a super thanks um we deeply appreciate it okay now let's set what's in my hair um focus we're diving back in so this commenter says so you don't think there's a supply and demand issue for good slash desirable men i mean it's clear as day look at the economy not every guy is going to be able to provide for a significant other let's be real someone is going to have to settle or be content alone which is just another way of settling because you're sac sacrificing companionship i know i know there's lots to discuss Let's go chronologically. So first line, you don't think there's a supply and demand issue for good, desirable men. Pause. Let's let's breathe in that one together. Men who are good men do not talk about how few good men there are. First point. Now, is there a supply and demand issue for worthy partners, worthy male partners? Possibly. Does that bother me? No. Why? Because I love my life. Now, the men who are not good men like to create or try to create a, a sense of hysteria uh, because they are, in fact, hysteric about the fact that they are not, that they do not have access to women as they believe they should. So they like to create that sense of internal hysteria externally and then place it onto women to say there is a crisis that you are causing. My crisis is your fault. And you can fix that by wanting less, by thinking you deserve less and feeling you deserve less and then giving men like me access to your life. That is hysterical on its own. But let us also dive, let's, let's read a little further. Let's read a little further. I mean, it's clear as day. Look at the economy. Not every guy is going to be able to provide for a significant other. Now, nothing that I said in this initial video mentioned anything about a man providing for anybody. This comment that they were responding to mentioned nothing about anybody providing for anybody. But that is what they hear. That is what they hear. Why? Several reasons. One, the vast majority, and when I say the vast majority, I do mean 98%. If you think you are the exception, I'm pretty sure you're not. <laughs> the vast majority of men relate their worth to their financial income, their monetary value to their intrinsic value. Now, in a patriarchal system, which was created by men, that is one of the goals. Y'all are doing what your system is intending for you to do. So for a lot of men, when they hear, when they hear women or people that want to date them say, I want a good man, what they're actually hearing is I is good financially. There's a lot of men that equate how good they are financially with how good they are as a human being. You could as anyone with common sense can realize you can have a lot of money and be a terrible human being. It happens all the time. But most men, they, they don't understand this. They don't understand this. They still, the, the, the ooga booga is so loud in the cranium, it reverberates from side to side, moving around the peanut, right? Like it's, so they can't fully grasp this, no matter how much women, femmes, people that date them, tell them, listen, the finances are great. 
Who are you as a person? Now, mind you, Shira 7 exists for a reason. She is a reaction to this system. She says, listen, if they are going to continue to ooga booga, if they're going to continue to ruin your life anyway, you might as well make a profit while you're there. I don't hate the player, hate the game. And let's not forget the men created the game. But anyway, but anyway. Let's continue. Let's continue. Let's be real. Someone is going to have to settle or be content alone. Right. Right. And it's the be content. It's not alone, but be content single because I am not alone. Most single people are not alone. They might feel lonely at times and then they hang out with a friend. They get a dog. They might date but also they might not. They have community. They have family found or through blood, whatever. But settle, you're gonna have to settle. A lot of the time people feel like I am gonna have to settle. And listen, if you want any old man, then yeah, I mean, settle. But also if you just want any man, is that like, ew. Here's how I think about this. Imagine we li all lived in a walkable city, a fully walkable city that had so much to do, so much to see, there was community, all of that, but emphasis on fully walkable city. And then imagine people keep telling you, you need a car. If you don't have a car, you're less than, you're undesirable, you're ugly, you're fat, whatever it is. <laughs> Ooga booga booga. Right. So imagine somebody's ooga boogaing at you as you live in a fully walkable city about how much you need a car. And then one day you're like, okay, you know what? Fine. I guess I have to have a car. And then you buy a car and the engine is falling out from the bottom. It's got tape on the windows. In fact, it's missing a passenger seat. <laughs> like, this car looks like it's been through the wars. This car went to, was first drafted in Vietnam, right? And it didn't come back okay. It didn't come back okay. But now you have a car. Yay. You got to make payments on it. You got to upkeep it. You got to try and put the engine right back to where it was. And now the back is leaking. It's got all this whatever. I don't speak car. It's falling apart. But you're like, oh my God, at least I have a car. I'm going to go tell everybody about my amazing car. Guys, don't you want this car? And everybody goes, why do you want this car if it's a fully walkable city? If you're going to get a car, at least get a luxury car. If you're going to get a car, at least get something good. If you're going to get a car, do, do you want this car or did you just want any car? And then at some point, that person's going to have to realize, one, they're putting in more work than the car is actually worth. They've actually spent more money trying to fix the car than the car is worth itself. And then you realize that the car is never actually going to get fixed. You dropped the engine. The muffler is three states back. You, there ain't fixing, no fixing that car. But it's, oh, well, at least I have a car. That's what it sounds like to me for the people that are like, but you need a man. But what if you said, I mean, people are gonna need to settle for a man. Why? Genuinely, why? And then to wrap up this conversation, we have this last line which is just another way of settling because you're sacrificing companionship. It don't make no sense. Men as a whole clearly have a hard time conceptualizing, understanding, and embracing is so far past. Embracing is three blocks down, right? They have a hard time, even at the surface level, understanding that we are fine without them. They have just as much trouble understanding that they are not in competition with another Ooga Booga out there. Another caveman going, yeah, they're, they're, that's not their competition. Their competition is the peace that we feel, the joy that we experience solo. Their competition is how well our friends treat us, who don't want nothing from us. That's their competition. It's not sacrificing companionship because we have companions. We have people that go through life with us. You just want to, you just want to be in that space to reap the benefits energetically, financially, any kind of monetarily, whatever it is. 
y'all just want to be in that space. Men have a very hard time under, men have a hard time being alone in general. Um, and if they are alone, they have a very hard time being happy alone, finding purpose alone. And when I say alone, I mean single, single. Um, they have a very hard time understanding that. They have a very hard time understanding that somebody could be happy being single. Could so happy that they're not even looking so happy that they are actively decentering male presence, male prioritizing validation energy from their lives unless it is worth bringing them into that space. They have a clearly have a very hard time understanding this. Also, I don't think that, especially not this commenter, but most men in general, the word companionship and the word intimacy, I see being used by a lot of men incorrectly. Let's start with intimacy. Intimacy does not mean sex. Intimacy does not mean anything that goes on after hours. Intimacy does not only talk about the NFSW page, right? Intimacy is intimately knowing somebody. That does not only talk about sex. That's talking about life experience, emotions, trauma, openness, dreams, aspirations, fears. That's, that's so much more that a person is beneath the skin than just canoodling and a lot of men don't seem to understand that they throw the word intimacy around a lot and they also throw the word companionship around a lot too having somebody share a space with you does not necessarily mean that you are a companion having somebody split the bills with you does not necessarily mean you're a companion having somebody even having somebody pay all your bills does not necessarily mean that they are a companion companionship is a deep, intimate relationship with somebody that I just don't have the evidence that most men have the ability to participate in. Why? Because it requires a deep level of emotional intelligence, recognition of, of self-awareness that I don't, I just don't have the evidence that a lot of men have the space for the kind of companionship that you think we'd be sacrificing. That kind of companionship, many, most, the women that I know, we got that from our friends. We're not sacrificing anything within this space to be with a man. And if it's the kind of companionship that I'm pretty sure that you're talking about, where it's just that sideways tango, um, what is going on with my hair? If it's that kind of companionship, listen, people can buy roses. There are shops for these kinds of things. And SW workers, plentiful, plentiful, right? Like women know where to go to get them, them kind of companionship needs met. Worst case scenario. Like if, if they want to, it's available. So what else what what else? like it <laughs> i just don't i genuinely just don't get it personally i just don't get it it this it don't it they don't make me want to settle it don't make me want to find just any old ooga booga but that's just me let me know your thoughts tippity type them away in the comment section and once again don't forget to like share and subscribe okay that is all for now and bye bye